Since the first buildings were constructed, architects have tapped the power of the sun to provide natural light. The ancient Egyptians used lattice work to filter light. They carefully positioned their buildings to align with the path of the sun through the sky. The Romans were the first to introduce glazing into their architecture, along with vaulted ceilings and arches that allowed daylight to flood into a room. Later, through the Renaissance and Baroque periods, use of daylight became more sophisticated as designers found ways to dramatically enhance different structures by altering the way light entered a room. Today, architects continue to harness natural light to create spaces that are comfortable, energy efficient, and aesthetically pleasing. If the past is any indication, then the future of daylighting is truly very bright. Modern technology has enabled us to better understand how to take full advantage of sunlight's benefits while minimizing its drawbacks. New products have emerged that offer exciting promise for improved results. And with the current emphasis on green building and LEED certification, daylighting has become even more relevant than ever. Over the next few minutes, we'll examine this topic in more detail We'll explore some of the compelling reasons to incorporate daylighting into a building's design, and we'll look at some of the challenges when doing so. Let's begin with the basic question. What exactly is daylighting? September 21st, 7 a.m. daylight time. Seven, eight, Daylight nine, and daylighting nine, is the use 11, of natural light 12, or the light of day one, to illuminate two, spaces, especially in commercial three, buildings. Four, Joel Loveland is a professor at the University of Washington and the director of the Integrated Design Lab in Seattle, a leading national research center on the subject. At the turn of the century, daylight was our primary source of illumination, as was natural ventilation for cooling in buildings. But as the technology in buildings changed in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, especially in the 50s, we moved away from daylight as the primary source, and fluorescent lighting became the primary source of illumination, and we nearly eliminated windows in buildings. So today, our role is to bring daylight back to buildings. The benefits of daylighting are easy to recognize. Anyone who has ever worked in an office building will tell you what research has shown. Natural light enhances worker productivity. A study by the California Energy Commission found that call center workers with outdoor views perform 10 to 25 percent better on tests of mental function and memory recall. The same is true in academic settings. The Heshong Mahone Group examined the effects of daylight on more than 8,000 third through sixth graders. In a single year, students with the most daylight in their classrooms progressed 26% faster in reading and 20% faster on math tests than students with the least daylight. Even shoppers spend more money when the lighting is right. Retailers have known for years that pleasant natural lighting puts consumers in a buying mood. That's the human side of daylighting. Something in all of us responds positively to the light of the sun. But the benefits of daylighting don't stop there. The bottom line is that natural light is good for the bottom line. Architects traditionally coming out of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, practice even through the 1990s, see daylighting as costing more. They think that a daylit building costs more because it has lots of windows, has lots of fascinating qualities and technologies that are very expensive. But in reality, today's daylight buildings cost less to build and cost less to operate. There's no need to prove that point to Costco. The retail warehouse giant began integrating skylights and daylighting controls in its stores in the late 1980s. To reduce operating costs, Costco management used domed rectangular skylights in approximately 4% of the roof area evenly distributed over the shopping area below. 25-foot high ceilings ensure that the light is diffused throughout the space. Photocell-based daylighting controls monitor daylight levels and determine when supplemental electric lighting should be turned on and off. The result? An annual energy savings projected at $23,000. Smart use of natural light has made good economic sense. There are obvious ecological advantages to daylighting as well, which is why it has been described as the most environmentally responsible lighting technique available today. Well, daylighting gets us what we'd like to think of as halfway to a sustainable building. The U.S. Green Buildings Council 
uh, in their LEED standard gives credits for different aspects of buildings in their sustainability. And in those credits, energy efficiency, contact with the outdoors, productivity issues, innovation issues, daylight can literally get you halfway to being a silver rated LEED building. Despite these positive aspects to daylighting, designing for it presents a number of challenges. Daylighting commercial buildings today is good work, but hard work. In many commercial buildings, uh, daylighting is seen as just a lot of big windows. But unfortunately, a lot of big windows create a lot of glare and overheating. Glare on computer screens, glare on uh, work environments and work uh, surfaces, where we have contrast ratios of two, three, four hundred, or a thousand to one in terms of lumens or lux. We really need to carefully design the building facade and orient the windows so that the windows themselves become diffusers of the light so that the light, the daylight inside the building is all diffuse and of a high quality. Factors such as window placement can be key. They must stretch high enough to bathe a large area with light. They need to face the best direction to capture the most light for the most hours. The use of the room also must be taken into account. What will people be doing in the space and what kind of lighting will they need? To address these questions, researchers in facilities such as the Integrated Design Lab create scale models of buildings. Welcome to our overcast sky. This mirror box simulates an overcast sky day at noon in Seattle. Let's go inside. The overcast sky is surprisingly bright. What we do in here is we test architectural models to see how much of the outdoor available light in the sky is actually getting inside. And the way we do that is we identify the apertures that the architect has created and look at how light from the diffuse sky goes in through the windows, through the skylights, and is received by the interior surfaces. When we're talking about daylight, we're really looking at the percentage of available light in the sky getting inside. And the way we measure that is by using photocells. We put a control cell on the roof and that measures how much light is available at any given time. And then we have an array of photocells that we put inside the model to measure how much brightness we have inside the space. Secondly, we do a lot of photography and what the photography does is it identifies how that space is going to perceive to people who are inside. So we calibrate our camera to this interior space and to the models themselves and then look at how light is received by those interior surfaces and how the, the, the volumes are going to perceive to the occupants. So this is our Heliodon sun simulator and this device allows us to simulate patterns of direct sun any time of day, any place on earth and any time of year. And what we do is we rotate the model through the hours of the day, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that allows us to capture the patterns of direct sun here, download it to a computer, and then do further analysis looking at glare and other issues. As the simulations indicate, relying on natural light can be a tricky business. You're at the mercy of the sun and the clouds. Some days will be brighter than others. You also have to factor in different times of the day, since the angle and intensity of the light will change with the position of the sun. Good daylighting solutions often look like they mean adding more and more windows. But in reality, it's window areas that represent 25 to 40 percent of the wall area that provide the best solutions for daylighting. These amounts of glass area provide good quality of light without glare, without overheating.